please share the information provided in this video. Always remember that a crucial part of removing a person's confusion is understanding his or her unique source of it. Calvinism. For the purpose of this video, we will define it as TULIP, total depravity, unconditional election, limited atonement, irresistible grace, and perseverance of the saints. But the problem comes in with the letter T, total depravity. The idea that you and I and everyone is born incapable of ever doing anything right. We are just born evil. And the fundamental problem there is... Well, doesn't that make evil the fault of whoever made me this way, and not my fault? That's a problem, because again, since God is creator, then God would be evil. Is God evil? Is God the source of all evil? Where does evil come from? Which Calvinism says you don't have the ability to choose to be evil or good. You're just born with only the ability to choose like different kinds of evil. Calvinists have a lot of responses to this. We're going to look at 12 in this video and see why the Calvinist responses don't work. Response number one. God has the right to do what he wants. Who are you to question God? In essence, what's being said here is, hey, you can't blame God for evil. You can't oppose God or question God or say anything about God or, you know, or, or question God at all. Now, the problem with this is that it just assumes Calvinism is true and just says, nana na boo boo, you can't ask questions about it. It's just the way it is. Well, that's rather convenient. I can say that Thor is God, and if you want to question Thor, Thor has the right to do what he wants. Who are you to question Thor? We have to scrutinize ideas to find out if they are true. And the same thing goes for Calvinism. Response number two, the Bible says so. And what they say is, hey, you know, the Bible teaches us that God just, you know, made us this way and there's nothing we can do about it. We're just born evil and we can't be good. So just believe it because the Bible says it and that settles it. Now that doesn't settle anything because if the Bible really says God is evil, then you need to throw your Bible in the trash because evil is not good and it's not good to believe in and worship an evil God. Response number three, there has to be some human responsibility. In other words, you confront the Calvinists with the problem of evil and the fact that they say that you can't choose to be evil or good. And you say, well, doesn't that mean that evil comes from God? And they say, well, there has to be some kind of human responsibility. So when you ask Calvinists, well, where does evil come from if, if we don't make the choice to be evil or good? And then they say, there has to be some form of human responsibility. They don't explain what they mean by that. It's just a way of speaking ambiguously so that people can draw whatever conclusions they want to draw from what you're saying. While actually not making it clear what you mean. What do you mean? Because ultimately, do humans have a choice to be evil or good? If you want to bring in this question of responsibility, it sounds like you're trying to talk out of two sides of your mouth, where you say, yes, we have freedom of choice to be evil or good, but I'm going to say it in terms of responsibility. And then you're going to say, no, we don't, in more clear terms. But ultimately, the question is very simple. Where does evil come from? Response number four, that's not Calvinism. And great. If Calvinism is not the teaching that humans are incapable of choosing to be evil or good, and that's just the way we're made, then who's got problems with Calvinism? Nobody. This is the major problem. God is not evil. Think of it this way. If God was not good, then God could dream of being good and dream of being greater, and he would have aspirations to be a better God and maybe wish he hadn't made the mistakes he made where he caused all the evil things that ever happened to happen. That's why God is good, because God, by definition, is is the greatest conceivable being. Response number five, God is evil and that's okay. Well, is it? Sometimes they'll have like a Bible verse from the King James where it said God causes evil to come on someone or something. And I mean, this gets to a linguistic issue. Like what does the word evil mean? Does it just mean that God put someone through some sort of trial or something? Doesn't translate it that way in new translations. Or sometimes people just say, yeah, God's evil. And the response again is, why do you worship an evil being? And does this evil being wish that he wasn't evil? Can you imagine a greater being who was not evil? Then even if that being does not exist, why not worship the idea of this being who's not evil? It's not okay for God to be evil. Don't make an evil being your God. At the very worst, make up a being who's not evil and worship that because good is good and evil is evil. Response number six, the Gordon Clark defense. 
Man is responsible because God calls him to account. Man is responsible because the supreme power can punish him for disobedience. God, on the contrary, cannot be responsible for the plain reason that there is no power superior to him, no being greater that can hold him accountable. No one can punish him. There is no one to whom God is responsible. There are no laws which he could disobey. Now, what's being done here is an appeal to divine command theory. Now, the problem should be clear, but let's just rehash what uh, the Gordon Clark defense is. In essence, what he's saying is, yes, God causes us to do evil things, and he's the source of all evil. He's where evil comes from. He makes us do it, but he's not evil because if you were to say he was evil, you would have to have something above him, some sort of standard by which he is judged, and he creates evil and good. So, therefore there is nothing you know wrong with with uh, God nothing can ever be said that is evil about God because that means you're judging God the fundamental problem is the obvious follow-up question if God cannot be judged as evil because that requires a higher law then can God be judged as good well obviously not because to judge God is good that would mean that there is some law higher than God now if God cannot be judged as evil or good then it's this sort of God is beyond good and evil Nietzsche tried to say that humans will rise beyond good and evil and Ravi Zacharias rightly points out that the flaw in Nietzsche's reasoning is that good and evil are fundamental ideas. When you say beyond good and evil, you're just saying more good than good and evil. In fact, if God is neither good nor evil, then how is he any different from some impersonal force which has no desires, no wishes, no loves? How is this God any different from no God at all? And how can we say that there can't be a law by which he is judged? if he has no greatness because he's neither good nor evil he's outside of that he just is then something could indeed be greater than him and we should worship that something god is good response number seven pick your poison because there are no good answers in essence what people will say is that yeah calvinism has this problem but every concept of god is uh, filled with uh, terrible problems well, just because you don't have any good options, why in the world would you decide that you're just going to have to pick a bad option? It's like saying that I don't know what 5 plus 5 is, but I know it's not 11, 12, or 15. But since it can't be any of those, I'm just going to believe 11. No, it's not 11 or 12 or 15. Just keep looking. Now, the response to the problem of evil when it comes to God is free will that God created a good thing when he created free will and that humans messed it up. Response number eight, we don't deserve anything good because we are evil. This response is almost too dumb to respond to except that I actually heard an actual Calvinist say this. And in essence what they're saying is why should we blame God for evil? We don't deserve any good. The question is not what do we deserve, but the question is why are we evil? The question is where does evil come from? The question is not is it fair for God to send people to hell? Of course it's fair. That has nothing to do with the more fundamental question of where does evil come from? Response number nine. It's Adam's fault. So this time what they'll say is, you know, we don't have the freedom to be evil or good. But that doesn't mean it comes from God. It comes from Adam. And God created Adam perfectly. He had the freedom to be evil or good. Now the fundamental problem there is if God created Adam with the freedom to be evil or good, then apparently God's sovereignty can coexist perfectly fine alongside human freedom. If a Calvinist is willing to give up that divine sovereignty and human freedom can coexist just fine together, they don't have much ground to stand on. They're just, other than it just so happens to be that way. And yeah, it just so happens to be that way. Sounds pretty dumb when you think that ultimately all my decisions are really Adam's decision. He's the only one who actually made a decision. I don't make decisions. I'm just a puppet on the end of his finger. Response number 10, God can use suffering for good. Well, of course he can. The Bible is replete with examples of this, and our lives are replete of it with examples of this, where we suffered, but it turned out to be for the good, for the greater good. But we're not talking about whether or not God can use suffering for good. We're talking about where does evil itself come 
from, which is a very different thing. We're not talking about bad things happening to you. We're talking about evil itself in the intent, in the thought, in the desire to hate, to steal, to kill, to destroy, to lie. Where do those desires, those wishes come from? Response number 11. Calvinists love to talk about something else and ignore the problem of evil. Response number 12 is, this is a problem for all Christians. And it's not. It's not a problem if you accept free will. It's a different issue when you have to ask yourself, why would God allow this to happen? But it's a totally different issue from the Calvinist issue of God is the source of every evil ever. I hope this video was informative and at least a little bit enjoyable. Thank you for your time.